happy Earth Day, everybody. And 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 uh, what I want to share with you today is a, a cloud cover estimator design challenge. And I know that we're not going to have time to go through the entire design challenge today, but I kind of wanted to walk you through some of the steps and some of the processes. All right. So from watching that video. Um, what do you know why why would why do you think it might be important for scientists to study clouds put that in the uh uh in the uh chat box for me please why might it be important for scientists and and you guys are citizen scientists when you study clouds why might it be important for us to study clouds Again, all the resources that we're going to share uh, that, that we're putting out here, we'll share with you after the uh, webinar is over. Temperature, okay, yeah. Better way to understand weather, absolutely. Cindy uh, also mentions, mentions that we can learn about um, there are clouds on other planets and moons too. So it's not just clouds on Earth. We might exactly. study other clouds too. Helps us understand the atmosphere. Yeah, lots of great answers. Right, to predict the weather. And um, you know, so we can use that maybe to help keep people safe. Gabe came up with that idea. Weston wanted to, you know, to know how the weather might impact the atmosphere or how the atmosphere might impact weather. Some great ideas. We have some good citizen scientists out there. We, we absolutely do. Okay, why is this not advancing? Okay, all right, so the challenge is this. You're gonna design and build, and we're not, as I said, we're not gonna have time to do it now, but your challenge, and I hope you really will do this, is to design and build a cloud cover estimator that can be used to identify clouds and to that, that can also help you figure out the, the, the fraction or the percent of cloud coverage that you have in the sky. If that is your challenge, what kinds of things do you think you might need to know to solve the problem? Put some ideas in the chat window. If I set that out for you as a challenge, what kinds of things might you need to know in order to solve this problem? Yeah, maybe, maybe learning a little bit about types of clouds for sure. Anybody else? Keep sharing. I love this. All right. Well, I'm going to move on. Um, and if keep keep please keep uh, sharing in the chat window. We'll we'll pull up your your thoughts as as, as they come in. Um, but for this design challenge, what we're going to recommend that you use, it, it, there, there are certain things with design challenges you have to have, there are certain criteria that you have to have. Those are things that you absolutely must have in your design. And then there are limitations that you can set for your challenge. For this design challenge, we're going to ask that you have a, a viewing area that's between 7 and 11 centimeters wide and 13 to 18 centimeters long. Um, your, your design challenge needs to have a way to measure the amount of cloud covering that you can see in it. Um, we'd like for your design to have a removable cover that, that'll help to, help to remind you about the importance of making sure that you never stare directly at the sun. Um, we want your cloud cover estimator to have types of clouds so that you can remember what type of cloud you're seeing and it needs to be portable or easy to carry okay so those are the 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 things that you absolutely have to have in your challenge now if you're doing this at home this would be a great activity to do at home with your family um, and you guys can determine if there's certain limitations that you want to place on the design challenge um, like a certain amount of time or a set amount of materials but we're going to talk about some of the materials that you might use for this design challenge. Um, and you can see those in the picture here. Um, now, these, for the most part, would, would be things that you would, would typically have around your house. But if, you, if, if there's something that you don't have, you know, you can substitute. Use your imagination and substitute, okay? Um, 
but you can see that I have in the picture a uh, cardboard box. Um, you're going to need a clear uh, section of plastic to, to serve as your viewer. And, you know, that could be a, um, a quart size baggie, um, Ziploc baggie just cut and opened up. It could be the clear plastic that you might find on a, a container of pasta. All of those could, could work. You could even use uh, saran wrap, but I think that's probably going to be the hardest thing for you to find of all these materials. Um, I also want to point out over here, we have on our website a, a, a design packet that you can use to, um, when you're doing this challenge, to record some of your observations and your design and your thinking, okay? All right, so if we're going to if we're going to, to successfully solve this challenge, some of you've already answered some of those questions. What are clouds? You know, why is it important to study them? You know, how does NASA study clouds? All of those kinds of things might be uh, things that, that you would need to know more about. So how could we learn more about these things? Put that in the chat box window. What could we do to learn more about um, clouds? Absolutely, Gabe. You know, observation is is a great way to learn. Um, and 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 as I go through here, I'm going to share some wonderful resources with you guys, and that you'll have more time to practice with. You know, after the webinar, and I hope, really hope, you will do that. Um, I, these resources that I have here are going to be. Um, in the in the presentation that's shared with you so that you would you'll be able to see all of these uh, different videos and, and other resources that'll be helpful to you. Meteorology reports, Brian, that's a great, that's a great way to learn. Um, Joan showed one of the videos from here, but there are other videos. And then some other resources that aren't um, NASA Eclipse, but they're are from our partners. There's a wonderful energy budget poster that you can download, and I've put the website for that. Uh, GLOBE has a uh, storybook. GLOBE stands for Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment, and it has a, a storybook called Do You Know That Clouds Have Names, and it, in, a, in, a, in a very interesting way takes you through all of the different types of clouds, and you can read that directly on your uh, iPad. You can download it you can, or on your computer, or you can print it out. Um, Natalia, that's another way. The news and, and books and going online, absolutely. Um, there's also a great ID chart, a cloud ID chart that you can use that GLOBE has, and, and it would um, really help you to review the different types of clouds and help you to remember which clouds are found at which levels. All right, so the engineering design process, you know, the first the first part of that process is to, to ask, and we've kind of already been doing that. You guys have been um, answering some questions um, to try to get to get at more of what you need to know to solve the problem. Again, here are the, the criteria that we have to have um, in our design. Um, you know, the as with anything that you do in science, safety is a primary concern. And so when you're cutting that cardboard, please make sure that if you need help, you ask for help. I would hate for somebody to, to hurt themselves with a pair of scissors because sometimes it's hard when you're cutting cardboard. And then also just a reminder, um, you know, to, to, to please, 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 when you're testing it out to, to watch and make sure you never look directly at the sun. All right, so we're kind of still asking some questions. Um, the next step in the design process is, is to kind of imagine. And so what I would like for you to do right now is to kind of think about, you know, how might you set this up? If this were your cloud, this is what you would see out of your cloud cover uh, viewer right here, what you see on the screen. How could you adapt that so that you could actually measure how much of the the sky is covered by these clouds. How could you do that? Whoops, I gave away my answer. <laughs> Go ahead and put that in the chat screen. What are some ways that you could measure the, the amount of clouds in the, that you're seeing?
So Betsy, Gabe is suggesting using a scale and Weston thinks maybe somehow a sheet of paper might might help to maybe with a scale, maybe combining those two thoughts. Um, okay, I like that idea, love that thinking. Right, Brian right. is suggesting maybe, you know, the shadows that could be cast by the clouds, which would be- Oh, I, you know, I, Brian, way. that's wonderful. I had not thought about those. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Nice, nice thinking, I love that. So this is definitely, you guys are using your imagination here. Um, Counting them scales. All right. So, um, you know, one of the ways, and this kind of really ties in, I think, with Gabe, what you were talking about, and Weston, what you were talking about, is maybe use some kind of a grid, um, you know, on your piece of plastic, clear plastic, that, that you're going to use for your viewer. You could perhaps uh, make a grid and in, into a certain number of squares. It doesn't matter how many to cover up your, your the, this, the specific opening size that you have. And that way, you might be able to um, get an idea of how many blocks in your viewing field um, are covered by clouds, okay? <clears throat> Love and these, uh, all of these ideas that are coming out. All right, so, you know, imagine also is when you would sketch out your design. So if you were working on this, and obviously we don't have time to sketch out your design. Can anybody put in the chat box something that they would include in there or some kind of something that they're thinking about as far as including in their cloud cover up, um, estimator? What is, you know, what might you do specifically with yours? What are some thoughts that you're maybe having about how you could design yours? Um, anybody, go ahead and please throw in some ideas into the chat window. Love to hear what you're thinking. <clears throat> I'm also wondering, Eric, could you type a little bit more and tell us what's an OCTA unit, OKTA unit, or um, that's something new. I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, Gabe, uh huh percentage of the grid design. I was wondering if that was an octa unit and it was like eight, but I, that was just, you know, my interpretation. Percentage of the grid design, yep. All right. How about for your lens cover that is gonna help you, if it's removable and it's gonna help you remember to, to not stare directly at the sun, what, what might you do that? What might you do for that? Okay. All right. Well, so here is what I did. Um, in my notebook, in my, my science notebook, my STEM notebook, I sketched out my own little design. This is what I was thinking about. And I, you know, I listed some of the ideas. Um, you could wear special eye equipment, for sure, Gabe, um, like, the, like the special eclipse glasses. Yeah. Um, and that and that would definitely be important, but it's still I would I would certainly caution everybody against looking directly at the sun, even if you had the special glasses on. Um, all right, so so you know one of the things I hope you might take the time to do is to do something very much like this, where you draw out your own kind of design, and and your design needs to you need to make sure in your design that you've incorporated all of the things that have to be in the cloud cover estimator all of those criteria, okay? Um, just to kind of step you through it, um, and this is this is just what I came up with. This was just my design. Uh, you can see where I cut out some cardboard and I put, I um, had some uh, grid paper and grid and I used that and, and made a grid across a clear piece of plastic. You can see that I punched holes and, and for mine, I made sure that the string was long enough that I could wear it around my neck. Um, and so when I go outside, because I do um, record clouds for, for um, GLOBE, for NASA, I can take that outside with me and use it now. All right, what do you think you, what, what do we need to add to this? 
What else need, do we need to do? Somebody um, put some ideas in the chat window. What else would you do or how would you modify this? Anybody? Sure, Brian. Absolutely. Oh, I'm gonna take you on to the next step. And and you know, this is this is just my thinking. I, I hope you will have your own ideas. But I put in some clouds along the side. And up at the top, I put my cirrus clouds because I know my cirrus clouds are high level clouds. And along the the middle of my um, cloud cover and the lower part of my cloud cover estimator, I put stratus clouds and cumulus clouds because those are ones that um, typically are mid to low level clouds and that I thought would help me uh, remember those. Okay. Maybe make the back around. Uh, okay, make that black. Okay. All right, great ideas. Um... Betsy, I think they're going to make some good presentation, good um, cloud cover estimators. 